Well, hello, and welcome to the Tired Craftsman channel. You know, it's actually, it's been a minute since we did a standard intro like this, hasn't it? Yeah, I suppose that's true. But hey, you know, we've been busy. I mean, we've been working on the robot army a lot. You know, that's, that takes a lot of time, you know, but that's not really for the, for the channel. That's for a, uh, a, a different thing. Yeah, 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 you're right, you're right, yeah. But you know, but now, now we're focusing on videos, you know, and speaking of videos, you know what else we haven't done in a while? A gadget video. Yeah, it's true, we haven't. We've been busy, with, we've been doing a lot of props and stuff, but we haven't really done a gadget in a while. So, I don't know, maybe we should do that tonight, what do you think? I think so too. Alright, well, that was easy. So now all that's left is to decide what gadget to make. No, I'm just kidding. I actually know exactly what kind of gadget I'm going to make. I fooled you. Today I think I want to make something loosely inspired by Iron Man's wrist-mounted missile launcher thing. Very, very loosely inspired. You know, it's going to be probably not nearly as good. I'm going to have to again apologize for the noise in the background that you may or may not hear. Um, as soon as I started recording, this one guy in my neighborhood decided to start riding his motorcycle around and revving it and just doing laps, and it's super annoying. And if you're somebody that rides a motorcycle, just know that everyone on the road hates you. And your mom's worried sick. But anyway, enough talking about the motorcyclists on my channel. I'm letting them win. I can't do that. Uh, right now I'm making some little foam darts that are going to be for the missile launcher. I found foam to be better than metal because it's less dangerous and easier to work with. Also, you know, metal's a... Uh pretty expensive and that's a, that's a whole nother thing. I'm not gonna get into that, but uh, that also has an influence on projects. You know how it is. But anyway, as you can see here, I cut some foam up into some little strips and then I'm gonna roll them up and I'm gonna make basically uh, tubes that are gonna be the projectiles because they're gonna go over a barrel. So they need to be hollow inside so they can accommodate that. You know, that's pretty much all there is to that. Then I'm going to use some contact cement to join it all together. If you never use contact cement, I say this in all my videos, you apply it to both surfaces that you want to join together, let it sit for about 10 minutes until the glue starts to feel tacky, and then you join them together and they join instantly. So make sure you have it lined up the way you want it the first time you join them together. And then we're just going to do a quick test fit. I'm going for snug, but not too snug. You know, you don't want to be super tight, because I don't know how strong the air is going to be going through that, but you definitely don't want to be loose. You want to be... I guess you want to have a little bit of tension, or, or grip, or something. Also, I don't trust the seams on those missile tubes, like the foam being curved that much is creating a lot of tension. So what I did is I took some really thin craft foam, and I'm going to basically wrap another layer around the tubes, making sure to have a solid piece of foam going over that seam. And this way, it should be pretty impossible for them to break apart. And there's a potential physics benefit there. I know that, well, as I think I understand that missiles are more accurate when they are top-heavy, kind of like an arrow. You know, the metal head makes it fly a bit straighter. Well, and the fins do too. You need the fins and you need to be top-heavy. So hopefully this will add a bit more weight to it and maybe make it a little more stable. I don't really know. We'll find out, though. Also, I'm going to use some floor mat foam for the heads of the missiles. So I'm just cutting off little squares, going to contact the uh, cement. Blah, blah, blah. I'm leaving it in script. Contact cement them on. And then I'm going to trim some of the material because I want them to be a little aerodynamic. So I'm going to trim a rough kind of tapered shape and then use some sandpaper and just refine that shape a bit more so that hopefully they fly good-ish. And of course they're gonna need some fins, so I use some thin craft foam again. I'm just gonna hot glue these on, cause that's at the back of the missile, so I, I feel like that's not gonna be taking much of the brunt of any impacts from being fired, so that should hold it pretty well. Also, pro tip, make extra, cause you are definitely gonna lose some. I lost two at the end of this video just testing the thing, so, you know, paid off. Also, since it's on screen, this is a good time to mention what the barrel is. I took this out of an old airsoft gun, so that's what I'm using. You don't have to use that. You could use any metal tube you could find, I would think. Preferably a narrow one, I feel like. I don't know much about air pressure, but I think that the smaller the channel it has to travel through, the stronger it's going to be when it comes out. That's why I'm drilling this hole through it, because I've seen someone do that before, and I think, yeah, that's the logic that 
this little tiny opening so it kind of fills up in the barrel and then has that little tiny exit point. So I guess that builds up the pressure, I'm guessing. Don't quote me on that. It worked. So I don't know. Also, as you can see there, I used some two-part epoxy sculpt to seal up the barrel. And I also took a bit of the barrel that I had extra and I connected that with some more epoxy sculpt to a CO2 bike pump. That will be important later. And then for the base of this wrist-mounted gauntlet thing, I made this template out of cardboard. And I'm planning on using a plastic bucket for the shell because it's cheap plastic and it's easy to work with. And I'm going to put a hinge on it and I'm going to make it kind of expand and contract so you can put it on really easily. So, you know, just trace the templates on. I used a pair of meat cutting scissors from this knife set to cut it all out, and that works super easy. Uh, again, other methods are probably good too. Jigsaw would be good, I imagine. Maybe an X-Acto knife if you're careful. Uh, probably more like a box cutter. Uh, just stick with the scissors though, they work good. And then to fit the sheets to my wrist, I'm gonna use a heat gun, and I'm going to just use that to soften the plastic up. Uh, burning plastic, super bad for you, you don't want that. But uh, if you're careful with it, it shouldn't be a problem. Usually the plastic starts to get like a little glossy, shiny looking when it's ready, and then just uh, bend it. This is really hot, by the way. I'm kind of used to it, but maybe you'll want to use like a, like an old towel or I don't know, washcloth or something. Uh, yeah, because it, it, it does get pretty hot. And once both sides are fitting good, I can add a little hinge on. Um, I'm not going to use screws because they would stick way too far through and that would be uncomfortable. So I'm going to use some aluminum rivets. I prefer to use aluminum rivets over steel when I'm connecting plastic together because something with the steel, it just it's, it's too firm and create kind of like a dent in like the point where you put it in. But aluminum seems to work just fine, it's softer. So yeah, that's what I'm doing here. Also, the tool that I'm using is called a rivet gun, and it is really easy to work with. I'm, I tried to film this in a way where you could really see how this all functions and everything. Hopefully I did a good job. But uh, yeah, if you've never seen that before, don't be intimidated. It's really easy to use. And that's looking pretty good, so now it's time to put the fastener on, which will be this stretchy little spring thing. There's a proper name for it, I cannot remember. But my plan here is to attach it to the inner walls of the top and bottom, and have a little bit of tension on it, you know, you always want it to be kind of pulling just a little bit. And the hope is that I can just put my hand through it and it will expand to fit past my hand and then contract again once it's on my wrist. By the way, I didn't come up with this concept. This, I believe I first saw um, a YouTuber named David Guyton, I think, uh, do it. He makes a lot of armor, like gauntlets and things like that. And I saw him do it for an Infinity Gauntlet, and it seemed like a really good idea, and I've always wanted to try it, but never got around to it. So today we're gonna see if I can make it work. I think I can make it work. It's, it's, it's pretty straightforward, hopefully. And we're good. And now we can add the, I guess you could say propulsion system for lack of a less generous term. And I'm gonna use this piece of wood and my plan is just mount it uh, with these little tiny screw things onto the gauntlet and then feed the barrel through it and then hook up a little tube going through the back of the barrel that's gonna go to the CO2 thing that I'm gonna have in my hand and that's how we're gonna fire it. And I really should have mounted that piece of wood before I closed this whole thing up. That made it a lot harder, but I got it done, as you can see, and we can continue. And the only real issue that I encountered at this point is that the hole that I drilled is barely bigger than the barrel. It's just like a little tiny bit loose, but that's not really a big problem. We just added a little bit of masking tape, not even like a full wrap, just kind of like a half, half piece around half the barrel. And that made it just snug enough to fit in there securely. So... You know, easy fix, not a big deal. And I also want to put a couple mounting points for spare missiles, so basically going to do the same thing again with a longer piece of wood. You know, just mount it onto the back there with a couple screws, stick some more extra pieces of the airsoft barrel that I had lying around, and those will be little places to carry some extra missiles. And it just adds more detail because I feel like this thing is looking barely minimalistic, which is never my goal, so, you know. More detail wherever we can make it work. Now 
Okay, and I'm starting to like how that's coming together. Hopefully now people will finally take me seriously as a threat. And then I'm just going to take this piece of old uh, PVC pipe. I think this is, I want to say, three-quarter inch, I think. Uh, this is from an old project, which is why it's black and not white. But I'm just going to cut it in half and kind of make like a little... Kind of like a little mounting point to snap the CO2 cartridge in when I don't want to be holding it. You know, just, just another little feature, you know. I, mean, I like to spice it up a little. Always important to countersink these types of things so that the heads of the rivets aren't sticking out beyond the inner surface. Because if they were, that would impede the fitting of the tank. And we don't want that. We want it to snap in there snugly and be kind of secure, but not so secure that we can't pull it out when we want to. And then I primed everything and sprayed it in metallic dark spray paint. Metallic dark metal? Metallic dark metal. You know, just give it a, give it a bit more oomph. A little bit of a wow factor. And then I'm going to use this vinyl tube, and this is going to be what connects the CO2 to the barrel. And I'm heating it up very carefully, just enough to get it soft so that I can stick something in there and stretch a little bit to make it fit on the tube a little easier, because it's a little too snug. You know, just uh, do that and it seems to work well enough. And then just to secure it a little extra, I'm just going to put some zip ties on it, you know, tighten it down. And this should hold pretty good, at least I hope so. And with that, it's pretty much done. I'm just gonna throw a little bit of uh, purple acrylic paint onto the missiles, because purple's kind of my color. You know, you want people to know who's firing at them. In this case, it's me. Um, so yeah, if you see purple things being shot at you, that's definitely always me. There's no way somebody could exploit that and frame me horribly. Now you know. And with the final touches done, there's nothing left to do except to load her up and give her a couple test fires. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling pretty good about this. And if not, I wasted my time and yours. And I apologize in advance, but I think it's going to work. Yeah, yeah, it's going to work. Look, how could that not work? that a modest success you know i'm happy with it uh, could use a little more power you know it'd be nice to have more accurate rounds but you know that'll come with time i am very new to the physics and engineering type of thing but in any event uh thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed it and um if you really like what we do around here consider becoming a patron you know every little bit helps you know it all goes back into new projects uh for the channel and yeah that'll about do it thank you and good night